Matthew, we are live on Facebook, in theory. Right. Let me know if you got audio, by the way. Okay. I'll keep on flabbering <clears throat> here. You know me, I could talk. Hold on, here we go. You got any good rags, Mitch? Uh, uh, I can hear you on Instagram. For some reason, like, Instagram? Fucking... What about Facebook? It's not it's popping up yet. A little yeah. bit. My pink, pink rag. It's my pink rag, and I'm not talking about Chase. Hey, 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 we're live, people. <coughs> I said I wasn't talking about Chase. I know. All right, you got me on Facebook? It's not popping up. Oh, wait, yep, got it. Got it? Audio. What about audio? Okay. Oh, yep. I heard myself. Well, you know what day it is. It's Thursday. It's time to throw it out there <coughs> on Shock Therapy Live. And rumor has it, I think Justin told me to bring my belt. He said he was going to teach me how to change. He took his belt off for the my feed. Belt. <laughs> Such a turd. What do you, here you go, Justin. Yeah, thank you very much, Chase. I really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, I think I got him pretty good. Actually, you're next, Chase. So, throw it out there Thursday. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. We're going to go uh, simple, or I should say easy. Something that everyone should know how to do when they own a UTV, and that is how to change the belt. Um, we're going to show you on a Polaris Turbo and on a Can-Am X3. Obviously, there are different clutches on different cars. We're not going to go through all those. We're just going to give you the basics and uh, maybe some things to look out for and maybe why you lose belts more often than, than not. Remember, it's throw it out there Thursday, so ask questions. We're going to get to as many as we possibly can. Uh, we might do them towards the end and do rapid fire. We might get them whilst we're doing all the work. And maybe anybody, right now. And anybody who goes live gets a t-shirt. <coughs> So go That's live right. with us on Instagram. That's right. Show us what car you've got and where you're at, and then throw your question out. What do you got, Chase? J. Rad Patty, you guys ever need a driver? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, not to run parts. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but I drive the car, and no one's getting in that seat. So uh, I like it way too much to give it up. <laughs> Matt's over there laughing because he's like, I know there's no way that's ever going to get given up. Forget it. Um, you anything else before we start, Chase? That's it so far. Let's kick this ball off. All right. So, Chase, why don't you uh, show Mitch doing some work? <clears throat> Mitch, go ahead and pull this cover off as if maybe uh, you were driving out in the dunes and you lost a belt. Well, I'm just going to talk while you guys are, while Mitch is doing his thing. So, on a Polaris, there's a couple different clutches, a couple different clutch tools. There's actually some really nice aftermarket ones. We're going to show you one from STV on the uh, Can Am uh, here in a second. But, Belts are basically the final drive mechanism and basically a lot, a, a good portion of what you would call a transmission, transferring power to the back drive um, through the trans gear. And it's also what's giving you a high and a low um, gear ratio is the clutch function. Now, that all of that goes through the belt. <clears throat> and you guys understand Mitch has never done a Polaris before. <laughs> so part of it. It's just a bitch. You're going to have to get that. There you go. So um, typically when you pull the cover off, it's because you guys have already lost the belt. And you're going to find a bunch of parts flowing around in here. This belt's probably going to be shredded. It's going to be whapped around all the primary and around the secondary. Or it could be completely exploded and half the parts have already come out the cooling uh, direction uh, on the exit on the top of a Polaris. But on a turbo, we've got one part or one tool in the kit that comes with the car. It's basically a threaded rod, and you thread that into the primary. So be careful not to cross-thread it. If you're in the dunes, make sure there's no sand inside the thread so you don't seize it up. But what you're doing by twisting this in is you're opening or expanding the secondary clutch, and it's starting to take tension off of the belt. So as you turn that in, you'll see that this belt's going to start to loosen up, and Mitch, since you've never done a Polaris before, you're probably going to wear your fingers out doing oh, yeah. it. It gets, it gets a little rough as you go, but you have to go as far in as you possibly can so that it's easier to get the belt out of that secondary. Just don't break it off. So what we used to do in the, in the turbo car that we raced is we took and made that thread and welded it to a socket. And then we put that on the end of the impact that we used to change the tires. So you actually can run that in and out with an electric impact and make this a lot quicker. 
The problem with that is the impact was so strong that you could, you could snap the stud off inside the clutch. And we actually never did it because we would put a new one on about every other race. That should be about enough, Mitch. So once you've got it opened, you can see how much room or space is on there. You can spin it around kind of like a, a belt on Chase's waist oh, yeah. to get it back on there. And pull it out of the primary. It's usually a tight fit in the front, but you can get it done. Now remember, we're removing a new belt. Normally, you wouldn't have to remove much. You're going to be removing parts and pieces. The important thing when you start taking things out of this assembly, especially when it comes to pieces, if the belt's blown up, there's probably parts wound up inside the secondary clutch or in the primary clutch or behind both of those. And that's behind, when I say behind, I mean between the clutch and the inner primary. And it can get stuck back inside these uh, passages, which are cooling pack passages. It can get stuck back behind the secondary um, and it'll wrap around the trans seal and cause the trans seal to fail. Um, it can get wrapped around so tight that you won't be even be able to move this because it's got belt bound up behind it. The best thing you can do is pick an end. There's going to be a whole bunch of frayed stuff. Pick an end and work your way around unwinding that frayed end. It'll pull out and get longer and longer as you're unwinding it. And do that one piece at a time. I wish I had one to show you, but we weren't about to go blow a belt up just for this. <clears throat> so let's make the assumption that you've pulled all the parts out. You want to make sure that you look up inside the exit tube uh, for all of the cooling air to leave. Make sure that this isn't packed full of belt. Make sure that's clean. You've got another one up in the front. Um, then once you've got all the parts behind the secondary and behind the primary pulled out or, or unstuck from the secondary, then you can take your new belt and put it on. So Mitch, go ahead and throw that one back on. Belts, there's, there are directions, or they are directional. And usually on a belt, it'll say Polaris or it'll say Can-Am on it. Now this one's used, so it's a little hard to see, but you can see this one has an arrow on it and it's going to show you directions. So just make sure that that's going forward like it always tells you. <coughs> Route it into the primary first. Get it deep up inside the primary sheave and then wrap it around the secondary one piece at a time, just like Mitch had taken it off. Get that tucked in. And uh, you'll find it might be a lot easier to put these on with the secondary going forward, unlike Mitch is doing. But he'd figure out that out pretty quick because uh, if it's in neutral or in gear, then a lot of times it's easier to move the thing the same direction that this runs when, it's, when the engine's running, which is counterclockwise. The belt's always going this direction. So with that on, we take that off. <clears throat> we got quite a bit of questions coming in Go for here. it. Yep. Dirt Poor TV wants to know, do you break in a new belt or just send it? <laughs> okay. So this is a very um, hotly contested question. Do you break in belts or you just freaking send it, right? Um, what we do uh, on the race car is we throw a brand new belt on it and we will get it very mildly driven. And I mean like it'll go through contingency. It'll get up to say 130 or 40 degrees. Not full running temperature of 180, 200, um, but just through contingency and we will start the race and absolutely pin it from that point forward. Um, we have had problems with taking a belt that we've run say 20 miles on and broke in got to 220 degrees and then started the race on that belt having cooled off and then start the race another day, pin it and blow that belt up. So we've seen that happen. I am not a big fan of breaking in belts and then having six pack of those all ready to go to throw on the car and run a broken belt. Um, some people are, that's great, you can be. We just don't. Um, we've had better luck by throwing a new one on there and pinning it or a new one on there and get a little bit of temp before you pin it and that's it. Matt? Uh, Carson Sandberg wants to know, do you guys recommend to let your belt cool down so it doesn't warp the cover? Um, I've never seen cover warpage because belts are hot. Um, we've, we've run belts testing at you know 240 degrees, pulled in the pit and stopped immediately, shut the thing off and do a bunch of things on the car and go rip it again. So I've never seen that happen. I don't. I just never heard of it being a problem. So Seems not, not a huge fan of, of having to do that because we haven't seen the need. Um, Mitch, why don't you fire it up? and show everybody that you can uh, basically rev this up in neutral just a little bit. Right. 
All right, so what he did was he just basically settled the secondary clutch into the belt. So now it's, it's no longer, you know, open from the tool to let you change the belt. It's a good idea to get tension on the belt like we just did before you get in there and send it. Because if you just hopped in it and floored it, then it would have such a big gap, it would kind of grab the belt in a very aggressive whack. And sometimes you get a lot of chatter in the secondary when you do that and take off again. So it's usually a good idea to do that. Um, let's, anybody got questions specifically on this car right here? We're not going to put the cover back on for you. You guys know how to do that in reverse. We'll go over to the can -Am. Did we answer Dirt Poor TV here? What yes. are some belt recommendations for Polaris oh, XP no. 1000? Um, so you guys, I, there's a lot of belt. I would say the gates uh, belts are nice. Some of the newer high temp versions are good. Um, I personally like the factory stuff. I would prefer a Polaris belt on a Polaris, Can-Am belt on a Can-Am. In the cars that we've raced, we've had better, lucks with the, better luck with the stock belts on all this stuff. Now, clutch tuning, I'm going to get into a little bit of clutch tuning after we change the belt on this Can-Am and kind of go over what hot is and what's not. I'll go over that in a minute. But tuning is probably a much more um, important thing than the belt of choice. But I, I prefer factory. We Let's got, look at that cannon. What do you got? We got one here from Nix413. Question about clutch. My clutch chattering and jerking. So chattering and jerking is a sign of your clutch being worn out or having broken parts. Um, you ha probably have some sort of wearing item like a slider on the main, on the primary or you know, you've got, you know, rollers that are possibly broken off the secondary. Something is binding as it, when it should normally slide very easily. You need to take the clutch apart and go through it, you know, or you need to send it someplace to have it rebuilt. That's typically what all chatter is. Uh, Dan Gonzalez wants to know, do you use aftermarket housings or liners to prevent <coughs> housings from exploding? So we don't use aftermarket housings. We use stock housings. The reason for that is that Can-Am and Polaris spent millions of dollars developing the cooling that goes into these systems when they're spinning. Um, pretty much anything you do to a factory cover is going to make the system worse. So uh, be very careful with aftermarket ones. Uh, a lot of times they don't have air ducting and directed fins inside of them and they're not as closely tolerance to the clutch like the factory ones are and you'll lose cooling. Um, liners. We have run aluminum and carbon fiber liners on the inside of our X3. Uh, because the X3 and her primaries are known to blow up pretty hard when you lose a belt, they'll take one out. Um, we continue to run a liner, and I like liners. Uh, a lot of people uh, don't. We don't have any temp issues, and we definitely save primaries by doing that, so I would suggest the liner. Um, maybe while we're answering more questions, Mitch, you can jump into this cover. So this is a X3, you guys. Uh, basically, same process. Just requires a different tool and some different uh, hardware. We got half the hardware off of this in advance, so this went a lot quicker, obviously. But you guys do what you do when you take these covers off. Um, Mitch, this would actually slide off a lot easier clearance-wise uh, in the front than the Polaris did. Now, Can-Am clutches are really one of the nicest uh, made and designed systems of all of them. Um, there's a lot of goods and bads in certain Polarises and also in, in other manufacturers, but the Can-Ams are one of the nicer ones. So assume that you've blown this belt up and there's a bunch of parts flying around. So Mitch, we're going to use this cool tool. This billet tool is from STV Motorsports, STV. There are a lot of really nice tools out there, but this one makes it really simple. When it comes to tools, nobody uh, beats Chase. That's for sure. Well, polished ones, at least. <laughs> yeah. So, yep, get that rolled. There we go. Well, that should spin. No, 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 you're cross-threaded. Okay. So this tool spins into the center uh, threaded hub portion of the secondary. And once it gets started, and uh, it takes a little technique, and Mitch, you guys, Mitch has never done it. We kind of forced Mitch, Mitch to do it because a lot of people have never done a belt on a new car. And we kind of want to feel your pain or show you that it, it's not that easy. Uh, huh. I feel like you said he didn't use that. Just to grab there. Oh, you know what? Because he's got the Evo cover, he doesn't have that plate. You're right. So the plate that Mitch had in his hand, you guys, that's for a stock secondary. Obviously, we've got an Evo adjustable hat on this one. So because it's got this hat on it, we don't have to use that plate. Now that this is threaded in, Mitch kind of lift up on the handle and cam it over, depresses the secondary, and boom, 
Bob's your uncle. We can slide that belt off if that'll stay. Should. Oh, Uncle Bob. That's right. Bob's a good guy. What do you got, Matt? Anything good? Let's see. Uh... I do got one. I got Speed Demon here wanting to go live with us. Let's let's get him live while we're doing this clutch here. Maybe he's got a question on clutches and we can stay on track. Speed Demon, what's going on, man? Where are you at? What are you driving and what's your question? I got a uh, 2014 Razor XP1000. I have your guys' full stage four kit with springs, shocks, everything, and I was wondering, should I do the, uh, what A-arm should I go with? Are um, you looking to go long travel, or are you just looking to change the arm for just any other reason? change the arm. I was on a ride and bent mine. Bent them? Yeah. So, um, if you're going to stay stock width, then my preferences are going to be Cognito, Lone Star, um, Geyser. Uh, those would be probably... ATD. I know they're cheaper, but are they any good? So, um, that wouldn't be in the top list of my fan uh, favorites okay. on that, uh, mainly because uh, I'm not 100% convinced that they're chromoly and they do have some uh, like factory ball joints and other things that I'm not a really big fan of. I prefer um, better rod ends, good bushings, chromoly construction, maybe a big uniball or a bigger ball joint. Um, so that's the reason why I kind of go that other direction. Not that their stuff is bad, not talking any smack, but in the racing that we do, that's typically what you're going to see. Very nice. Cool. So that's it. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks for grabbing all our stuff. Send us a yeah. t-shirt color and a size, and we will uh, make sure that Chase gets it to you. Awesome. Thank you, Chase. Thank you. Bye. All right, check it out. Mitch actually got the belt off. <laughs> so here's the one one thing that's bad about liners, you guys. Or a question about liners. This one's got an aluminum liner. In it. it takes up a little bit of space inside the system. It makes it tight. You don't have to pull it all the way off, Mitch. It's fine. You can pretend you're putting it back on. But with that liner in place, it's a little tighter to get uh, the belt off of the system. So it's a little bit more work, but not that big a deal. In the race car, I, honestly, I prefer the liner. So. What we're doing is pretending that we've got that belt off already. We're putting it back on. You kind of work it back into the secondary a little at a time. If the car is in neutral, sometimes it's easier. Now that you've got the belt in place, you can cam over that lock and unthread it. Now he's basically let tension off that system so that it can grab the belt. One thing you can notice, if you can see, if you can look inside here, you see how far the belt is inside that primary? It can't even touch it with my finger. It's about this far up in there. That's because this hasn't settled yet. So Mitch, go ahead and neutral. Neutral drop it. Neutral drop it. Yeah. John Tamilla wants to know, uh, Justin, what are you doing clutch-wise to get 98 plus miles an hour in your race car? Um, good question. As soon as this thing is done firing up, I'll tell you. So now that this is settled in, you can see the belt is on the outside of that primary, or at least all the way on the outside. And that is where you want it before you end up sending it. And that way you're not going to blow a belt up on the launch or uh, have excessive chatter. So there's your, uh, your X3 belt system. Thank you, Mitch. I know that was paying the out. Of course. All right. So um, back to mile an hour. Um, we don't do much. Uh, we run a stock belt, uh, but we have a tall tire, so we've gained a ton of gearing in the car. We haven't really gained the mile an hour because of clutching. We've done it because we've got a 33 inch tire. Also, we can play with the gear ratios inside the trans in our class. You have to run the stock trans, but you can run any gear you want and there are some aftermarket ones. I got a live one here, Justin. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I believe I got Jose here. Where are you at, man? What are you driving? What's your question? I live in Albuquerque and I drive the Maverick X3 base model, mm -hmm. turbo. And my question was, so I wanted to put 32 inch tires on it, uh, um, and I seen one of, you, um, one of your videos that you said that dyno jet clutching was a good option, but for the 120 horsepower base model, I couldn't seem to find uh, the clutch kit for it. So Matt, they're, they're not making it yet? Not, they didn't make one for the 120. Okay, for the 120. Sorry, buddy, um, they're not offering that kit for the 120. It's cool that I've got Matt next to us and knows all the product line for uh, DinoJet sitting right behind us, but yeah, they don't make one for that yet, so apologize, I recommended the wrong thing. Maybe uh, check KWI, that's Chris Worth at KWI Clutching, 
I think he's in Michigan, Minnesota, something like that. I think he's Minnesota. But um, call Chris. He's probably got a kit for you. And if he doesn't have exactly what you need, then um, I'm sure he can recommend somebody that does. All right. That's it. Then. Thank you. Thanks, man. Send us a shirt size and color. Chase will send you something to Albuquerque. All right. Thank you. So back to mile an hour. Um, you know, our, our mile an hour, um, you know, we could, our race car will go well in the 100 mile an hour range. Um, but it's mostly about gearing. It's less about clutching. Um, clutch is temperature. Um, and clutch diameter is going to give you your mile an hour and there's not very much you can do to change that. Some machine work here and there for um, overall width on secondary can help, but uh, other than that, we're looking at gearing in the trans and tire. What do you got, Chase? We got some questions here, Matt. Matt, you want to fire these off here? Um, Instagram? Yep. So I, I've got a, where can I purchase a tool kit to remove the gears and uh, on a K&M to replace the housing? Remove the gears on a cannon to replace the housing. Um, what gears and what housing? That's my question to you. What do you got, Mitch? Uh, Spinal Farms asked if I purchase a steering rack, is the installation included? Uh, no, we charge you for that. And what, how much is it on a Polaris and, a, and an X3? Remember, Mitch? Uh, I think it's like 100 bucks on one and $200 on the other. Yeah, something 100, like that. 100 bucks for Polaris, 200 bucks for the k and I think. Something like that. Yeah, if you do a whole bunch of other stuff, we'll throw in the labor. But if you just buy the rack, then it's uh, we're going to charge you a little bit. I got a hashtag, yes, Mitch. Oh, yes, yeah. Mitch and no chase. Yeah, Mr. Sparkles also wants to see uh, uh, Matt and I arm wrestle. Yes. Oh, that's true. That, get, it said, yeah. get done that was last from Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. Yeah, Steve yeah. Knievel asked, did I miss the arm wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> what other questions have you guys got? If not, then uh, I'm going to go into belt temps. Kathy Higuera wants to know, do you recommend running the car without a clutch cover? Um, I don't really recommend no clutch cover. The reason is that you're going to get all the dirt and stuff in there. If you're in the dunes, a lot of people do that because it will run a lot cooler and the sand isn't horrible when it comes to destroying clutch parts, but it will wear them out a lot quicker. In any desert scenario or trail or mountains, you don't want to do that because you're going to get big rocks in there. It can bind up the clutch, break parts. Also, if you go through water, it's just going to slip. So I would suggest you keep the cover on and tune the clutch better. And I got Adam Wagner wants to know, he noticed a while back you ran STM clutches. Is there a reason you changed? Yep, so the STM on the pre-runner was probably what you saw, and that was on our little speed video, speed run, two and a half years ago. Um, we did that so that we could get exactly the RPM and exactly what we wanted for as much mile an hour as possible in that car. Now, since then, there are better options for us in tuning the factory clutch than the STM on that X3, in our opinion. So we've gone back to the stock clutch and done all of our tuning there. It's the only reason why we swapped it out was because of the new options in stock clutches. Here's a really good question, all the way from Brazil. How do you guys tune the springs based on weight specifications? Um, well, it comes to spring kits for UTVs. We do a lot of testing on those in advance. Um, we do weigh all the cars. We weigh cars with accessories. We weigh cars that are stock. We weigh cars with people in them and all of that. Um, there's a couple formulas you can use when you figure out spring rates, especially with dual rate from combined to single rate. Um, we might use one of those formulas to get us in the ballpark on the car, but after that, we are changing springs according to how we feel it rides, good or bad, to make changes to improve that ride quality for the better. So I would say a, um, a Generic spring formula gets us in the ballpark, but everything else after that, the majority of testing is seat of the pants and experience. Hey, Justin, what helmet pumper style do you like, top or bottom? A giggity giggity. <laughs> as well as, when are we going to Texas, Justin? Uh, so, uh, pumper, um, I run a fill that is at the top of the helmet because it runs down the visor first. And if you're racing in Mexico, you'll go from mountains and desert right to the beach and at night you can get fogged up uh, face uh, helmet uh, visors really really easy so my top fill helps with fog uh, inside the visor uh, i used to run a side fill for a long long time and i had no problems with it except for that uh, fog on the visor so i like the top he likes it on the top okay. that's right hey where are we going to texas justin uh, why would we go to Texas, Chase? Because Lopez Romero says, when are y'all coming down to Texas? So, actually, I should ask Matt. So, Matt and Savino have some plans for shows out there that direction. They might end up going through Texas on the way to maybe Mud Nationals. 
Either that or the endurance race in the Texplex. Ooh, so Texplex is coming online? Uh, it and should be so in December. December. There's an endurance race over there that I think the guys are going to go to, so you might see us out there in December. Uh, got, Mitch? UTV Rebels, any way to prolong the life of your clutch 2020 Turbo S? Um, the best way to prolong the life is make sure it's tuned perfect. That's basically the only way that you keep clutches alive is the proper weight and spring assembly. I would really consult DinoJet, I would consult KWI on both of those things. So that brings up another subject. A lot of people ask um, why they go through belts so much. You know, they go every 100 miles they're blowing a belt up in the dunes or 250 miles in the desert they blow them up all the time. Okay, there's only one reason for that and that means that the clutch tuning is not accurate and you're getting heat and hurting belts. That's basically it in a nutshell. The clutch tuning does everything. It affects everything when it comes to belt life. So if it's wrong, belt's gonna run hot, you're gonna go through belts. If the tune is not the problem, you could have something with mechanical parts. The clutch could be worn out. Some of the sliders and rollers could be broken, not working properly on the primary and secondary that cause temp. So that's it. What you got? Cleaning your clutch to blow it out. Yeah, Mitch had a good stuff. point. So if you, between trips, if you pull the cover and blow it out, you're going to get a lot of the dirt out that tends to make the clutches stick. And a sticky clutch is a hot belt that you will definitely blow up. So make sure that you have a clutch life and that you're doing repairs, keeping up on it. That'll keep the most life out of it. I've got like 2,000 miles on the belt in our Kawasaki, and that's all Baja miles. I've got probably 2,500 miles on the belt in my pre-runner. That's all Baja miles. So, but we're going through the clutch a lot. We're making sure that it's perfect. We just keep the same belt on it just to see how long it'll go. So it's totally possible, when we run the race car, over 300 horsepower, 2,500 pounds in for 1,000 race miles floored without having a belt problem as long as uh, it wasn't uh, Silver State 300. Are you guys running AccuSemp on the race car from XR650 Lou? AccuSump? Yep, AccuSump. A-C-C-U-S-U-M-P. Nah, uh, what is that? I forget. It sounds familiar. I don't even know what, what the product is, though. Expand on that, would you? What is it? Justin, we've talked about this before. Your thoughts on the Walker Evans Sway Bar Links? Of that. Um, so uh, the Walker Evans Links will give you more body roll, which can sometimes hurt you, especially if you're trying to corner fast. If you are rock crawling, then those links will definitely help you. You need more wheel independence, and it will make it a softer ride. I would suggest you run one link per car and limit the body roll to half of what it would be with two. Start there and then work your way up. That would be uh, what I would suggest. Probably good for slow stuff and not very good for really fast stuff. Luke is from Brazil again. Is it okay to paint the springs? Does it affect the performance? Ernie's favorite question and subject. No, you can paint the springs all day long. You need to use the right paint so that it's not gonna crack. If you powder coat the springs, we do not warranty them anymore because a lot of powder coaters use too much heat when they clean or strip the spring original color. So we don't recommend it. It has to be a really good powder coater, and uh, we do not have any warranty on spring that's been powder coated by somebody else. Uh, when will Razor XP1000 radius rods be back in stock, Justin, from Speed Demon? Uh, they will actually be in stock on Tuesday next week. Diversified fab, clean your clutch. Clean the clutch, yes, blow it out. And it seems as if I had a dime for every time we had this question, I would have a ton of dimes. Same size tires all the way around, what size wheel and tires do you run? Yes, same size all the way around. Most of the cars we run are 32s. We prefer a Tenzer uh, or a 33. And on the wheel, uh, wheel of choice is yours, but we like methods and any different style they have. And you want to keep the offset to no more than a 5.2. So that means 5.1, 4.1, 5.2. Never run a 4.3. Only, only thing you run a 4.3 on is an older 900 or 800s. Uh, XR650 Lou said, AccuSump is an engine oil pressure accumulated to maintain oil pressure if the pump pickup sucks air like oh. a hard <sighs> Yeah, so we don't run that on any of the UTV stuff. I, I know what you're talking about now. We used to run that on some of the drag car stuff back in the day. But like, these engines are basically dry sump, so you don't have to worry about um, having an extra sump of oil in case the thing bounces around. You can almost run these cars upside down and don't lose oil pressure. Is Ibex considered good clutching? Ibex? Yep. Um, I don't have any experience with that, so I can't tell you. Does the Power Commander <laughs> add more power to the KRX 1000 with exhaust? Um, Matt. Um, there was a very slight increase. Yep. 
Um, last I heard, because it was just being released when I left, um, I do know there's someone working on a bolt-on turbo, mm -hmm. uh, that the PTI unit, so it could uh, it could actually change fueling and timing based on uh, how much boost you're you're gaining. So um, I would check on that. I think it's K and T. I think they were developing it. Yeah. Yeah, because we sent them a couple units, so they're so, out of Utah. But the power commander was making a difference. It just wasn't a huge one. Correct. Okay. Cool. Mega Dirt Diesel. I love how he formats mega a question dirt. here. Mega, mega Diesel. Mega right. Desert Diesel. There it is. <laughs> how about the Assault Industries clutch misting system? Misting. BS, like most of their products, question mark? <laughs> I can't see adding yeah. any kind of water to the clutch any good, even if it flashed to a vapor. Yeah, um, really good point. Everything you said I would agree with in that I would never introduce water into a clutch. Not a good idea. Maybe if they went to like a um, like an AC condenser in front of the clutch intake, might be a really good idea if you could do something like that that actually cooled it. But again, so so I agree with you, Mega. That's not my favorite and probably smoke and mirrors. But um, I would suggest that clutch tuning is always the key. And if you have clutch temperature or belt temperature problems, then you have clutch tuning issues. You need to address them. Mr. System in the inside of the cab of the car, baby. <laughs> yeah, you can take the belt system and put it on your face. Yeah, there you go. Chase's face. Eric, 522, will you guys be in Glamis in October? Sorry, Matt. And if so, how can we make an appointment? Matt, take that one away. Um, it's all depending on what the state does. Yeah, um, you're right. I mean, if they, if they let us, uh, if the dunes are open, then we will be there. And uh, we'll be there all summer or all season, the four majors. If you want to set up appointments, then call the shop. Talk to the guys up front, and they will put you on the schedule. I would suggest you do it now. I believe what, yeah, and Sam says usually everyone starts calling about September. So do it now. Yeah, do it early or you're going to miss spots for those trips. They fill up fast, and we don't have very many spots available per day. All right, Michael Dunnigan, he's messaged this twice. He wants to know when the uh, Pro XP steering rack is coming out. And he says, and yes, come to Textplex. So Pro XP rack is out. Um, it's on our site already. Uh, that's the same. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. It's no. Turbo S, RS. Stop, stop. Our Turbo S and RS1 rack is out. We do not have a rack out for the XP Pro uh, yet. We are in the middle of developing that and the KRX and the Honda racks right as we speak. Um, don't hold your breath, man. It's probably going to be a couple months. Mason Cushman, do you guys recommend the clutch fans like the blowhole fan? Um, no. Um, I don't recommend really any fans because most of them don't push enough air. They're all like 600 CFM or less. And that is like, like pissing in the wind compared to the amount of air that the clutch actually pumps itself just by spinning. So if you put those fans in line with your original intake lines, you will restrict air and it will run hotter. If you run that fan outside of the original factory system in addition to it, it might be a little bit better when the thing's idling. It could cool it down a little better there, but I doubt it's going to help you when it's floored. There's no way that those fans keep up with floored clutch CFM numbers. Peel 0218, Justin, wondering why you guys don't use SB particle separator. Would uh -huh. SB be a good play in a car? be good for a play car or do they just rob the horsepower from the car so SB particle separators are awesome and they work great um, great for a play car and I would suggest it the reason that we don't run them is because we reroute the factory air cleaner on all of our shop cars to have the intake source be inside the cab as soon as you're drawing air from inside the cab which is really clean compared to the back of the car by the engine which is really dirty and very silty, dusty, um, you will find out that air cleaners are going to last a very long time. We can run um, the whole race on any race, Vegas to Reno, super silty, Ba 1000, super silty. On one air cleaner, it's never going to have a problem when it's directly pulling air from inside the cab. We don't run the SB because it draws power, and most of our race car stuff, we need as much power as we can for other fans. Jesus, Yorente 80, do you guys think the Sand Sports Super Show will happen? I think that's a Matt question. Flip a coin. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, uh, mm. that's really up in the air right now. Mm. Um, I know the plan is from uh, Bonnier is that 
they are still going forward until they're told otherwise. They're still booking stuff. Um, if the show goes on, we'll be there. If it doesn't, um, we're going to go to another show, whichever one is the first I'll, one. I'll be posting once we have an idea of where we're going and when. I'll be posting about it so people know where we're going to be. Ooh, look at this. Thomas, hashtag yes, Chase, received the shirt plus the red band that goes on the roll cage, the koozies. All right. Also got an X3 TLS kit. Good looking, man. Thanks for the letting us know that Chase is doing his job with shirts. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'm not Chase, gonna... you are not fired. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Off grid writing. I'm going to see if I can get them to connect live here. Make sure everyone sends in all their questions because they're going to be tuning out here. Off grid, what's going on, man? It looks like you're busy. <laughs> What are you doing? Are you inside a helicopter? Where are you at? We're, we're working on a, on a tower. Hell yeah, man. Well, where are you at? What's your question? What do you drive? So, I'm in the downtown LA right now. And uh, I drive a 1000 Razor. Hell yeah. Badass, man. What's your question? So, my question was, I'm thinking about trading it in. Um, but uh, I think that's the last two I'm thinking of. What would you guys think between the XP Pro Unlimited and the Turbo S? Um, I do an XP Pro. Um, I'm more of a fan of the new Pro than I am the Turbo S. A little bit. Um, and uh, I, I think there's, they've got a little bit better suspension design on that car. It doesn't drive like it's narrow. It drives like it's wide. So I'm a, a fan of the Pro. Okay, perfect, perfect. I, I think that's the route right I'm going to go. Right on, man. You can count on me to spend your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he sent us another. You might have signed on a while ago, right? This is your second time on? Yeah, I did. Did you get a shirt from Chase or did he not do his job? No, he did. He did. He did. Damn it, I was, I was going to fire him. <laughs> oh, you know what? There, man. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Out. <laughs> hey, send us another color and a size, okay? We'll send you another one. All right, perfect. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> See? Well, Hashtag no chase, getting yeah. around. Uh, deep forest spices, so when will you be offering clutch upgrades since you hired Matt away from Dino Jet? We will never be offering clutch upgrades. It is not what we do, and Dino Jet does an amazing job of it. So does KWI and some other guys. We're going to let them stay doing clutches. We're going to stay with what we do. Steve Okanevil. <laughs> Who else would I have to ask random questions like shock tuning for my 170 in Traxxas? Uh, oh, Steve-O. Traxxas. And he says that he never got a shirt. Steve-O, I'm, I'm calling a little bluff here. I don't All know right, about that's, that. That's one and a half guys today, Chase, that have not gotten their shirt. You know. At least. So I'm thinking if we got one or two more people that say you didn't send it, you're out of here for sure. Hey, I... I, I Hashtag fire chase. David Jackson wants to know if... Uh, uh, a new name has been chosen for me yet. I don't think so, Matt. Have you got a couple of them that you like? I'm, I'm waiting till tomorrow, and I'm going to start running through them tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day, you guys. We're going to take some uh, choice. We're going to narrow them down. How's that? And then we'll give an announcement on Monday or Tuesday. Chase. We got a live one here, and I like this name. Super Rockin' or Super Rockstar Dad here. Super Rockin' Rockstar Dad. What's going on, man? Where are you at? What are you driving? What's your question? Hey, guys. I'm actually in Flagstaff. I have an XP. Uh, Ford Turbo, and I'm kind of curious about doing the sway bars. Uh, is it better to do the front sway bar or back sway? Bar? So then I, I would ask you where you drive it the most. If you're in flag, is it going to be fire roads on the rim? Is it going to be um, in the cinders? Or do you take it to the dunes or other places? Where do you drive the hardest? We do we do run down the dunes, but we also do fire roads up here as well. You know, my wife is kind of a little leery about running the dunes, and it gives her a little little anxiety. So I'm hoping something will kind of take the tip out. Okay, so I would do a front bar first because it's going to balance the car the most for fire roads. Um, if you you're going to like the advantage, I know that. But if you want to have even more body roll limitation or control, then do the rear one after that. But do them in stages. Um, if you were more in the dunes or more in the cinders, I would tell you do front and rear because the extra control in the rear, that's a lot more side traction, side bite in the dunes and in the cinders, which is going to tip the car. So I would do front and rear, but if it's trail and a little bit of mix of everything, do the front one first. Fair enough. Thank you. All right, man. Shirt size and color. Thanks for calling us. Appreciate it. Right on. Go Broncos. Because <laughs> Chase has been to Denver. Oh, yeah, Ever so many times. in your in I love, your life, I, love I mean, <laughs> do you do you, do you score a touchdown 
or yeah. do you uh, do you, I, do you, do you hit a home touchdown from sure. or something? That's how you would describe you it, right, Chase? A goal. Goal. <laughs> a goal. Did you score a goal? Yeah. In football? Yes. Mm -hmm. Football Americanos. What's what's another favorite of team you have? Uh, I would say the Bears. Duh. <laughs> I thought you were going to go purple and pick Vikings. Uh, you know, no, I like the Dolphins, to be honest with you. But why? Why, why do I like the Dolphins? Justin? Why do you like the Dolphins, Let's see Chase? how well you know me. Uh, no, I'm going to let you explain it. Ace Ventura, <laughs> Pet Detective. Oh, the movie. That's why. Do you why. know the Dolphin? Do you talk to the Dolphin? Do you have a dorsal fin? <laughs> we can count on Chase. He is almost fired, though. So you better hurry up with the movie references. What do you got, Mitch? Uh, BLK. Doug, if it were you, Justin, and not involved with shock therapy, would you buy the new 2021 with Smart Shocks or 2020 XRS and get shock therapy? Um, XRS and get shock therapy. Um, the reason, and here's why, not just because I work here, but the a worked set of shocks will perform better than a Smart Shock that's not worked. And that is because the Smart Shocks are going to be extremely stiff and a lot of rebound, but they will perform awesome in how they function but a tuned set of smart shocks are amazing. But stock smart shocks worked, uh, not smart shocks are worked ones are better. We got Bradley live here. Bradley, where are you at? What's your question and what are you driving? What's going on, guys? I'm here in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, I well? currently have a Turbo S Razor that I'm currently building. I just sent the shocks out to you guys and just got it back a few weeks ago. Awesome, did you ride it yet? I have not been able to ride it yet. I'm just still uh, still waiting on a few more parts. Gotcha. Um, my curious suggestion was, what do you, what would you guys recommend for suspension out there? In Henderson? Yeah. Um, what do you mean when you say recommend suspension? You already have our stuff, so do you mean like arms and stuff? Yeah. Arms. Okay. So are you going to go long travel or are you going to keep it the same width? I'm going to keep it the same width for the Turbo S model. Okay, so on a Turbo S, I would suggest Lone Star, Cognito, um, and uh, does guys are make one for a Turbo S yet? You guys know? I'm not sure if he does. I don't believe so. Or, or not. I don't believe so. Okay. Then um, those would be my two choices, top choices. Both are chromoly. Um, both are badass. One is tubular. One is boxed. So maybe choose the one that you prefer, tube or boxed. Right. But those guys, they have a ton of racing experience, and everybody that we race against and with has that. And so you know it's going to work. Gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome, man. You got anything else? All right. Well, thank you. No, that's about it. Hey, have fun in Henderson. Send us a shirt size and a color, and we'll see if we can fire Chase because he doesn't send it. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll send the right one. Yeah. I'm size, I'm size fat, so. We got size fat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, All right. Are, rapid you, fire. Out rapid of here. fire questions because we're reaching our 45 minute margin. Mm -hmm. How's the Pro XP with long travel ride better than the Turbo S since the Pro has much smaller shocks? Um, I believe that it's all about design. There are some geometry changes in the Pro compared to the Turbo S. Also, uh, the Pro does not have body roll issues um, like a Turbo S. And, and not the Turbo S's have body roll issues. It's just that a, a, a What's up, guys? Um, not, it, it's just that um, a, an XP Pro drives like it's, like it's wide when it's narrow. So when you make an XP Pro wider, it's even more stable than a Turbo S. And the geometry works a lot better. So that's your, your main reasons right there. Plus, uh, big shocks on a Turbo S, I mean, that's a bypass, which means it's actually a two and a half inch piston with a three inch body. So when you go to an XP Pro, it's a two and a half piston without a three inch body. It's still the same size piston, which is ultimately what you're gonna get for bottom out resistance and performance. I had another fever. I had to get another live one here. What's going on, man? Where are you at? What are you driving and what's your question? California. We got a YXZ and a Razor. Right on, man. Two cars in Bakersfield. Killer. Hey, the question is, uh, the long travel adding will be help the YXZ. Is it worth the money? Um, yeah, because I, I don't think there's a uh, difference in cost. I don't think there's a difference in cost between arm kits very much, whether one is a stock wheelbase or one is longer, right? So it's almost like you can get the long wheelbase for free or at least for 100 bucks or 200 bucks more. So I would definitely do a longer wheelbase on a YXZ and it will help. It will probably be like a 10 or 15 percent in improvement through the whoops, but a stability on width is definitely going to be better too. Awesome.
So, how do I get an appointment for Camp Razor? Uh, what was that in here? Appointment for Camp Razor. So give us a call at the front office, talk to the boys up front, and they will give you the open dates. I would do that pretty soon because they fill up quick, so give them a call. When you do that, then uh, send us a private message so Chase can send you a shirt. Give us a size and a color, and we'll get it out. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, man. Have a good day, man. Uh, your boxes. Uh, Kevin Lee, 024, would you recommend cage work cages? Yeah, cage work cages are awesome. Um, Larry Raglan's uh, Late Sun, amazing company, great designs, absolutely cage works all the way. What else you guys got? Uh, Critter1427, thoughts on the new Wildcat? Uh, when you say new Wildcat, do you mean the Textron or do you mean Robbie's new Speed UTV? So if it's Speed UTV, should be amazing, can't wait. If it's the original Wildcat from Textron, then um, same as all the other ones that's been out for two years. Uh, it's a great car. You just not, uh, in my opinion, right now, Textron's not going to support you very well. So I would consider that in your purchase decisions. All what else? I, Can we quit? Off, super awesome, rocking dad. What is Camp Razor? Camp Razor is probably one of the bigger, better events for UTVs to go down at Glamis. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, Camp Razor Polaris puts on a hell of a show. They spend millions of dollars on that event. Live bands. They give away cars. Tons of vendors. Uh, lots of events, uh, and it's in Glamis, and we will be there in vendors as well. So it's a good time and a lot of people. Critter was talking about Robbie's new machine, not the Wildcat. So, yeah, Robbie's new Speed UTV should be amazing. Um, he's done a hell of a job on design. Can't wait to have one in our hands. We're supposed to do some testing with Robbie in late August. We got a lot of people, Logan and Baxter. Does the KRX spring kit release next week? Thoughts on the KRX shocks, and when will you have aftermarkets on the shelf? So, um, spring kit for the KRX is probably not next week, but maybe the week after. Um, we're just waiting for one more part. Um, love the shocks that are on that car, and we can make that thing work amazing. We, it's one of the most impressive shop cars we have right now when we let people drive it. Um, funny you ask about KRXs, because our KRX is over here. And here's a secret. Chase, come over here on the right and show that rear shock. Guess what that is, gentlemen? That is a Fox internal bypass on a KRX. It is the only one in existence on any KRX. So, we have options for you guys in KRXs coming soon. You will have the ability to purchase complete set of internal bypass shocks for a KRX and really take it to the next level. We're in the middle of testing right now, so don't ask us when we're done. Don't ask us when we have it to sell. Um, because we have to put some time in it first, but at least uh, give us 30 days at least. We're coming to the end of the bridge here. HCR Arms, Justin. Uh, I like ACRs. Um, they're certainly great for play cars. Um, we just have a, a ton more race experience with some of the other ones I recommend. Not that anyone's bad or better, but HCR's great. Is a side-by-side -side a car or a hillbilly East Coast dirt bike? <laughs> I, will, uh, I will go on record saying that side-by-sides are not bikes. No <laughs> matter who you are, where you are, where you live, or how you drive, bikes have two wheels. That's my definition. I think these are more cars than they are utility, personally. And it's a lot easier to say car than side-by-sides. Pay in the ass. Internal bypass, amen, KRX. Hey, Matty, we got something that we got to settle here. Before we, uh, we let go, Justin, I'm going to need you to take this. Watch out for that microphone right there. All righty. So uh, I am now doing uh, the filming. Well, we Justin, you got a real job. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> hey, I actually have you in the frame. Uh, Going wait. down, clown. You guys ready? Ready. Hey, I'm gonna let you go. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> wow, that is way more. Oh, you were being nice to him, Matt. <laughs> All right, Chase. You're, Don't worry. you're so fired. I'm going to be hitting the gym. <laughs> right on, you guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys doing that throughout Thursday. If you have any questions about our parts, then give us a call at 623 217 4959. If you would like to purchase any of our parts, then just go to our website, shocktherapist.com. Have a great weekend.